Hello students, here's another topic called as Burgess disease and Reynolds disease. Now what is the meaning of Burgess disease? Now all this time we have seen about the blood vessels, what happens to it, the weakness and if there's any kind of disease within it means what the blood flow is not being restored or does not the blood does that the blood flow does not happen properly. So in this condition what happens in Burgess disease, the blood vessels will start to swell okay, and can become blocked with the blood clots. And the blood clots is called as the thrombi or the thrombus. And what happens to this, into this is this can eventually damage or destroy the tissues and may lead to infection or gangrene. And which is disease usually first shows in the hands and feet and may expand to affect the large uh, areas of the arms and legs. So that is what you see in the picture there. You can see the different coloration. So when there is no coloration, you know that disease. it becomes now blue. This is a and that is what the depiction of this particular condition, the, the arms or the um, the palm you can see um, how the blood flow is restricted through the tiny blood vessels and eventually what happens when there is no circulation it becomes ballooning and that particular condition is also called as thromboangitis obliterans okay so burgess disease also called as thromboangitis obliterans your blood vessels becomes inflamed uh, swollen and can become blocked with uh, blood clots what happens there is there can be constriction of the blood vessels and this can decrease the blood supply um, that is uh, in turn causing the um, hands or the palms to turn this particular color. So what happened basically there is narrowing. You can see the blood vessel and there is not enough blood going through and the lumen you can see you can appreciate what it looks like um, with uh, the circle here and here how the lumen is actually decreased. What are the etiology for this? Yes, it can be due to any sort of uh, autoimmune disorders, immunological disorders, rheumatoid arthritis any sort of arterial disease so any sort of disease of the blood vessels trauma medications in the long run example especially when you're on beta blockers or uh, that is um, hypertensive medications also when there is a carpal tunnel syndrome that is again related to your circulation whether you feel the uh, numbness and also pain in the um, in, in the wrist area and disease of the arteries chemical exposure as well as um, the disease of the thyroid glands as well so it can lead to hypothyroidism even that can eventually cause this particular condition and uh, to add to all, stress can also be one of the factors. The clinical manifestation, again patients can start to um, show some kind of a pale reddish or blue, blue uh, tinged hands and feet, tingling numbness in the hands and feet, pain, inflammation along a vein, fingers and toes can turn pale and also painful open sores. The fingers and um, toes again they can be very very uh, uh, painful, um, um, what is that, sore is again uh, nothing but a boil again so uh, the this can be very very painful even to perform the daily activities. The risk factors again associated with this can be classified as primary and secondary. Primary is again uh, related to your age, gender, family history and climatic conditions and also um, secondary it can be related to any sort of other com comorbidities or associated diseases. Even certain occupations can cause this particular exposure and also can uh, cause a person to have this particular problem and also when it is uh, when the persons are exposed to certain substance. Diagnosis, yes, a blood test to rule out the particular condition is when I told you there is going to be blood clotting and disorders and Allen's test is another simple test which is actually going to check, you can, be, you can perform it anywhere. So you just hold trying to um, uh, constrict the patient's blood vessels by pressing on the radial as well as the ulnar arteries and then ask the patient to hold a fist and then you press it for a few seconds and then you let go and in a certain period of time the circulation has to, uh, has so to actually that does not reason. happen then, then you uh, conclude that yes the person is having this particular disease condition. So this is what you do, you are going to press the radial as well as the ulnar arteries and uh, once it is uh, the uh, uh, person is having that uh, clenched twist and then you open it out and usually what happens the color should return within 15 seconds and in a normal person but if it doesn't then yes the person is having some sort of um, circulation disorders or, or uh, disorders in the um, arterial um, wall or um, conduction of the uh, circulation to the different parts of the body. In detail if you want to check this yes, it can be done with quitting your uh, quitting smoking, alcohol and also leading up for uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Nursing management again, um, nurses are going to be teaching the patients to manage their stress and also help them cope with the situation when there is exposure to cold, how it can be minimized, um, even wearing gloves when you're in the colder conditions and also patients should warm up their mm, vehicles before getting in there to avoid touching the, even because especially when you're having this condition and you cannot be holding on to another uh, when you know um, cold surface and uh, any kind of 
even especially when you're driving. So you're trying to uh, warm it up and uh, making sure that it does not cause or hamper your particular condition. So again, um, also during summer, a sweater um, and uh, should be worn available when entering air-conditioned uh, rooms. Yeah, sometimes when, especially when there is uh, no circulation, yes, the person's body temperature is going to be very low. Again, uh, you're going to be feeling extremely cold. So even even during summers, it can be bad for the patient. So trying to help the patient uh, avoid these conditions and trying to um, help the patient avoiding the elevating of the body. And in case, due to, as I told you, even in case of um, gangrene, that is completely the death of the tissue, then the ultimate option is only to perform an amputation, means removing that portion of that particular body part. So uh, even if that is done, then yes, the person has to be very cautious again, um, how to, uh, you know, um, uh, trying to uh, cope with that particular condition is very important and coping with the grief, uh, fear and anxiety related to the loss of that particular limb. And recovery and rehabilitation also um, is very, very important at that time. And also, um, spirit, uh, thing, you're trying to educate the patient and the family members uh, with this particular situation. And also very important, the occupational therapist trying to help the person um, perform activities and do the uh, particular uh, particular activities properly. And when they come back to his normal uh, phase of life. So the management will also include exercise programs, monitoring the pulses, stopping uh, stop smoking, avoiding injuries, antibiotics, analgesics. Um, and also, uh, as I told you, if the only uh, choice is amputation, then you're trying to get the patient and the family ready for this particular condition because you know that it is going to be removal of the body part. So it needs um, a thorough psychological support as well as explanation to the patient and the family about what is going to be expected. The next topic is become white due to the lack of blood flow. The fingers can turn blue when the blood vessels dilate and when, especially when there is no when there is lack of oxygen and finally the uh, fingers may turn red as the, as the blood begins to return or restore. So you will see the three phases and again it can relate to the uh, constriction of the blood vessels. So the types again includes primary and secondary. Primary is again it's, um, can be associated with any sort of medical condition. It can be very mild and it can resolve on its own and sometimes yes maybe a uh, medical uh, mild medical management has to be given. But in the secondary condition, yes, it can. Uh, it is less common. Again, uh, even though it is, it is there, then it can be very serious at times. So it has to be um, uh, effectively and also a medical management has to be provided appropriately. The etiology or the causes for this particular condition will include connective tissue disorders, diseases of the arteries. Okay, carpal tunnel syndrome is nothing but it involves pressure on the major nerve of your hand, producing numbness and pain. This is what I was explaining to you when I sp uh, spoke earlier. So, but causing pain and numbness in the hand and that can make the hand more susceptible to cold temperatures. Okay, So that is nothing but carpal tunnel syndrome, is nothing but due to pressure on the major nerve. Repetitive action or vibration, again, uh, again when you are playing this piano and doing a lot of uh, activities or movements for a long period of time. So that is when you say that whenever you are doing something like this, you need to take break and you do, do that particular hand exercises and finger exercises is very, very important because you do not want to um, cause any problem of a sort of um, restriction in the flow because you're keeping it in that particular uh, for a uh, position or um, thing for a long time. So avoiding smoking, any sort of injuries to the hands and feet and also certain medication. The signs and symptoms are, as I told you, the common features are nothing but color change, numbness, tingling as well as swelling and um, the severe features will include deformities, they will change the shape and uh, the, uh, structure fingertip ulcers okay nothing but boils and it start to see the wound happening and eventually when you know that yes uh, they can lead to tissue death there's absolutely no um, uh, circulation as well as uh, lack of oxygen as well as uh, blood supply then yes it can lead to gas as well now this is a classic Reynolds disease you can see this picture here white bluish or reddish tint in the hands and feet uh, it can be very painful and uh, frequently the presenting symptom most people develop during the course of the disease so it does not appear immediately so as the disease progresses you will start to see this particular conditions um, getting worse and worse how do we diagnose this particular condition yes with a physical examination holistic collection blood tests yes and also you do a detailed um, blood profile uh, trying to check out all on your uh, your uh, what is that uh, clotting factors your bleeding time uh, performing an Allen's test is nothing but again checking on your circulation, how it is and how it quickly it is restored. And as I told you, uh, in deep if you want to check, then yes, you're going to be doing an angiography, is nothing but you're trying to rule out a particular condition. Arteriography, okay. again, this is all going to show us the pr proper circulation conditions and what is actually going on with the patient's um, hands or feet. Again, uh, the medical management for this particular condition is you're going to be avoiding the stimuli, whatever the etiological risk factors are, you're going to be avoiding that, making sure whatever medications you're on, again, you're going to be using it appropriately. 
and also getting appropriate management and yes if you're having this particular uh, condition of pain and you know um, uh, you need to be on aspirin as well and uh, any kind of clotting disorders or factors again yes you're going to be on blood thinners and medication so that you know that you're certain happening and sympathetic to me is nothing but um, it's nothing but you're related to your nerves okay so the sympathetic nerves by removing the sympathetic ganglia uh, or dividing the branches may help some patients. So this is nothing but a perform, uh, procedure that is performed which is nothing but ectomy is nothing but removal. Okay? So the surgical cutting of a nerve or removal of a ganglion to relieve a condition affected by this uh, stimulation. So again that is what is and what is a nursing intervention for this? So um, nothing but you are going to be assessing the patient's blood circulation, color and sensation, applying warm compress, Administering the medication as prescribed by the doctor, monitoring the blood circulation, encouraging patients to perform exercises of the extremities even while sitting and doing. The nursing diagnosis will include ineffective perf uh, peripheral tissue perfusion. So you know that it's related to your blood circulation. So yes, uh, it is not uh, doing a pro flowing appropriately. So the, yes, there is going to be ineffective tissue perfusion, anxiety, pain um, at the site as well as uh, risk from infection. Uh, yes, obviously, uh, you know, your activity intolerance will be there because you're not being able to perform what you normally did. Um, again, uh, again, it could be, again, due to this particular um, depression or anxiety, yes, the nutritional imbalances are also being unmet. And uh, last but not the least will be deficit. How do we take care of this particular condition? So you're going to be educating the patient about the outdoor activities, how do we keep himself warm. Um, even while traveling, make sure you you know you don't injure yourself, and especially when you're in the car. Again, as it was during the cold weathers, make sure you um, turn on the heaters and keep yourself warm. And uh, uh, sometimes, as I mentioned to you, especially with the patient's physical um, uh, structure is built up, and as well as the immune status, even during summers, the patient can be feeling extremely cold. So the whole idea is to keep yourself warm, uh, sticking to the medications, what is being produced, uh, what is being provided or administered, and very importantly is. Um, Making sure at all times, um, your you uh, know what is that? Your um, uh, what is that? Uh, you need to keep yourself uh, the body temperatures um, control again. Uh, very importantly, the you the whole idea is to keep yourself warm and the body does not being ex is not exposed to this um, unhealthy weather condition. With that, we finish the small topics, which is Burgess disease and Reynolds disease. Thank you for your time.